U.S. Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer has, is hanging up his robe after serving more than two decades on the high court. His retirement gives President Biden a chance to nominate a new liberal voice to the court, fulfilling his promise to appoint a black woman to the high court seat. So what black woman could be tapped to be next for the Supreme Court? Take a look at your screen right now. There's a short list of potential candidates that could fill the role, making it a historic first. Sharon? Yeah, Shannon, there is a clear path to the Supreme Court, including the selection process by the White House. Uh, our justice correspondent, Candace Kelly, is with us to explain how one of these potential nominees could get into those hallowed halls. Could it be finally, Candace? Um, it's so exciting. All eyes, though, are on this selection process. I need you to break it down. How does the president make such a crucial decision to find a nominee? Well, you know, normally, President Sharon, they decide this very secretly. But as we saw on the full screen, it's not so much as a secret as to who we're go who's going to be the front runner in all of this or who are going to be the front runners. At this time, the president is fielding calls. The president is doing research. He is talking to his staff. I am sure that Representative Jim Clyburn will talk about Judge Michelle uh, Child that he likes. That's his favorite. Uh, different groups will also be doing their research about this potential nominee because you want to know what are their thoughts about gun rights, abortion, voting rights. They're going to be combing through all of the papers, all of the speech, anything that they have that's out there in the public to give them any indication as to who they are and whether or not they will make a mistake during the process. And if that's the case, uh, they want to get rid of them before this process. You also have the FBI that's involved along the way. They want to know everything about them, especially whether or not they have domestic help and how they paid them. That's always an interesting one, mm. but a very big one. And what's also important is that you want to make sure that there are no scandals that will follow this potential nominee. As we saw with Judge Kavanaugh, there were scandals. Judge Thomas, there was a movie about it. We know that they are digging hard. But here's what we also know, Sharon, about black women. If these black women are already judges or already high in their position, they've been vetted. Because if they are in their position right now, I would find it very difficult to believe that any negative information about them has already has not been found already. So it will be an interesting process because there are a lot of amazing candidates. Very exciting time, as you said. Yeah, black woman is very adept. The obstacle course is placed in front of her. Um, it's business undermining the black woman in America. So, so yes, uh, they, those candidates have been vetted. But once you know everything there is to know about them, then, Candace, why are the public Senate hearings, um, why do they draw the most attention in this process, with the stakes being so high when it gets to that, that stage in front of the cameras? The stakes are very high at this point because now you want this person to be in front of you and show exactly who they are. How will they answer questions? Will they be honest? Do they seem truthful? Um, it also gives the senators an opportunity to get any information out based upon their research, because their staff is doing research, too, and they will ask them specifically about this law review article back in the 80s or the 90s. They will ask them about specific speeches and about what they meant. They will also, very importantly, ask them about decisions and specifically ask them, how do you feel about the settled law when it comes to abortion rights? How do you feel about the settled law when it comes to affirmative action? Uh, you know, a lot of justices have gone down um, in the day. Uh, Bork, Judge Bork, back in the day, he was on the stand for 48 hours. Um, he did not get nominated because of his racist views. Then it's interesting, when we look at the what is called the Earl Warren Court, the Warren Court, which was a very, very liberal court, he was a Republican nominee, a Republican appointee by Eisenhower, but he was one of the most liberal justices out there during the time of the civil rights, civil liberties. He, su he supported that. And Eisenhower said, this was the dumbest decision I ever made. This is what Joe Biden doesn't want. He wants to make sure uh, that the person that he nominates does decide along party lines. As much as we say it is not political, Sharon, it mm -hmm. is political. We, we know that it is political, and this is going to be the time for senators to figure out how this person decides. You know, what's interesting, during the time that Amy Coney Barrett was being nominated, one of the senators even asked, hey, what's that on your pad? What types of notes are you looking at? And she held up her pad, and it had nothing on it, showing that she wasn't using notes at all. But they can ask anything that they want at this time to see and understand the legal acumen of, this, uh, of the nominee.
Yeah, I know an, another ex-president still alive who doesn't appreciate some of the decisions some of his appointees um, have made in recent days. But you mentioned uh, Justice Barrett. Boy, that was lightning speed. It seemed we buried um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and then the next thing you know, here she was. So how long will this process take? Again, expect it to be a black woman who gets the grilling this time. That's right. Now, Justice Amy Coney Barrett, as you said, she uh, was nominated inside of 31 days. Uh, normally, it takes about two months. Here, we need this to happen very quickly, too, and I think that that's what Joe Biden is going to be pushing for. Because of the way that the Senate is split, we don't need a senator getting sick or passing away or upsetting the, the, the delicate mm. balance that is out there right now. So even though Justice Breyer said that he is going to step down, I believe, in six months, getting that confirmation sealed is, is, is a big deal, and they're going to do that as quickly as possible. And as you said, there's going to be a lot of scrutiny because this is a black woman, but I would imagine that based upon the fact that she is already where she is, that there are not a lot of skeletons in her closet, and that this will probably also take place inside of 30 days because this needs to happen quickly before everything is uh, interrupted, and, and we can't foresee that. Another interesting to point out is that uh, the filibuster was removed during Amy, Amy Coney Barrett, so we know that that's not going to be a problem. So here we are. I think within the month, we will know who will be the next black female Supreme Court justice. Well, I hope she's very young or young enough, Candace, and recently vetted. So the same Republicans, guessing, who voted yes then, perhaps yes. for uh, the federal bench, will have no excuse for voting no now, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. It's still very exciting for people who look like us. Thank you so much, Candace Kelly. Um, insightful. Appreciate you.